Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Spines. In the long-running tradition of making a video because somebody said something mean on the internet once, I present to you this, a history of tracing and art. First up, just to straight up address some of the common things talked about both online and in videos about this topic. No, tracing is not cheating. Yes, tracing is totally fine. No, tracing doesn't mean you're bad at art. No, tracing is not stealing. Yes, tracing well takes skill. Let's start with that last point. Drawing well is a skill, and by extension, tracing well is also a skill. There's a bit of a misconception around that drawing is just about the marks that you make on a page, and if you're good at making marks, you're automatically good at drawing. That's not the whole story though. Drawing is in part about those marks that you make on your page, but the skill starts in how you look at something. Drawing at its heart is about how you observe and notice the world around you, and how you can represent what you see through the marks that you make. Drawing is a learned skill, and the longer that you do it, the better you'll get, because you'll build a visual language and a library of techniques in your mind. Tracing is pretty much the same. You can trace something poorly, or you can trace something well. There are so many different ways that you can trace an image, and what you end up with all comes down to the visual choices that you make. To trace well, you need to borrow a lot of your observation and visual language skills from drawing. As I've been talking, you've been watching me trace a photograph of myself taken when I was four years old, and I've traced it in a variety of different ways, making different choices each time. Each tracing is wildly different. Some are good and some are bad, and they were all made from exactly the same source material using the same pencil on the same type of paper. The only difference each time was me and my decision-making process. But even if someone can draw, why would they trace though? Isn't that just cheating? Well, no. Art isn't and shouldn't be a competition. Personally, I make art because there are questions that I want to explore and stories that I want to tell and things that I want to say, and I find visual art to be a good medium to communicate those ideas. I don't do it to show off or be the best at something. Depending on your reason for making art, tracing might be a perfectly acceptable tool to have in your belt. It could be that you're a professional designer or an artist working on a commission, and in that instance, tracing could save you time and it could save your client a lot of money. People often have the general misconception that artists back in the good old days did every single thing by hand from scratch. Often the only thing we see from those great works of art is the finished piece. So it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that those paintings were born whole cloth there on the canvas. When you look a little deeper, maybe with an x-ray scanner in the back room of a big art gallery, or maybe just in context with other paintings by the same artists, or from the same time period, you'll see that many of those great artists use every single trick in the book to create their masterpieces. Like a lot of professional artists today, they were strapped for time and they were working to a budget, so they often used and reused a thing called a cartoon in many areas of their work. Speaking of the great Renaissance artists and the patrons who financially supported them, now seems like a good time to remind you that I have a Patreon and you can go and support it. I've got a whole bunch of different reward levels available and every little bit of support really does help me make my art and help me keep making these videos here for you. Outside of Patreon, if you want to buy my artwork, there's a bunch of original art for sale on my website, and if you want to buy reproduction prints of my paintings and drawings, I have those up for sale on Redbubble. As usual, you'll find links for everything in the description in the same general area as the like and subscribe buttons. Back to cartoons though. In this context, the word cartoon is a little bit different than how we use it today. A cartoon was a drawing of something on paper or parchment, often details like the draping of cloth or background elements in a room, and the artist would cover the back of the cartoon with chalk, they would place this on their canvas, and then they would trace the important details and line work. They would basically put their finished drawing together like a big jigsaw puzzle before painting. There's a really great video from the Getty Museum that goes into detail on this, and I'll link that in the description because it's really well worth a watch. Cartoons were also used a lot by tapestry artists, and in this context they're still used in the same way today. 
An outlined drawing is made up and placed behind the tapestry loom and the weavers use this as a guide to create their work. Along with cartoons, it's also highly likely that the great artists you know and love used a variety of other optical tools in the production of their finished artworks as well, including mirrors and tools like the camera obscura to project, resize and trace. Don't get me wrong here, all those artists back then could definitely draw and paint and they could do it very, very, very well. But they also knew that time is money and they had to be smart about the way that they worked. Other art forms are primarily based around tracing as a concept. Think of your favourite Disney films from the past, for example, made before the advent of 3D animation. Tracing is the crux of these animations. Rotoscoping and cell animation are processes where a drawing is made, and that drawing is one single frame of an animation. That frame is traced with some small changes made, which becomes the next frame in the animation, and so on and so on and so on, until 10 million hours later you play all those individual frames back to back, and you have one single minute of magic where your drawing moves and comes to life. Animation would not exist as we know it without tracing. Tracing is also really important and useful for the art of printmaking. I'm primarily a printmaker, so this is the one that's closest to my heart. We use a lot of different methods of tracing and printmaking. Unlike the more immediate art making methods like drawing and painting, us printmakers use a middleman in the production of our work. We create what's called a matrix, which could be a copper etching plate or a carved piece of lino or a piece of plywood, a limestone or a screen and we use that matrix to produce our finished artwork. Because of the general nature of printmaking, most of the time we need to work with a mirror image when we're making our matrix, and tracing is often what makes that possible. It's hard enough to draw well under normal circumstances, and it's much harder to draw a mirror image well from scratch with an inkless tool on a piece of metal and understand what that's going to look like when it's flipped and printed on a piece of paper. Printmakers also work a lot in layers of colour, so tracing and using tools like Photoshop in the planning stages helps us separate out all the elements that we need so that we can bring our final artwork together as successfully as possible. But that's all well and good, but what about the naughty people who copy other people's artwork and then they sell it as their own? That makes tracing really bad, surely? That's theft, pure and simple. If you copy somebody else's artwork and you pass it off as your own, you are stealing and it's illegal. People don't have to trace an artwork to steal it. In fact, the best forgers of times gone by weren't bad at drawing. They were very, very, very good at it. They had to be the best in order to be able to fool people. The motivations of people who steal the intellectual property of others and try and pass it off as their own are not the same as the things that motivate an artist to create an original artwork. And that's tracing in a nutshell. Don't feel bad about tracing if it's something you want to do or you need to do, and don't put other people down for doing it. Tracing is a skill, and if it helps you get the results that you want, then that's great. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it. And if you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment. You'll also find links in the description for my website, my Patreon, my Facebook page, my Instagram, and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.